Freak Out release by Hot Chip. 11 songs, 47 minutes long. Hot Chip are a band. Uh, no, no. They're, uh, they're a group that has been making, you know, glitchy, oh, post-techno. I wouldn't quite call it electronic music, but it's definitely the earliest, like, synth electronic that you could, like, have feasibly. They're at the stuff in the 2000s, so to speak. And I remember them, like, remixing songs. They did a lot of Gorillaz mm-hmm. remixes back in the 2000s. Mm-hmm. They had their own um, really good tracks, like back from The Warning, which was the first um, truly hot chip album that I remember. Um, But they've been really holding it down through the decades with albums like In Our Heads that had a lot of classics. Why Makes Sense, which was um, had a really great, a lot of things that people liked. Uh, A Bath Full of Ecstasy, which we reviewed on Audio Faced, and we liked a good amount of it. I love um, that record. Speaking of, as we were talking about earlier in this episode with Silver Sun pickups and songs that hold longevity with you, Hungry, Hungry Child. Child. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Listen to the shit out of this song, dude. Got a lot of mileage out of that track. And yeah, like I've loved a lot of Hot Chip remixes too. I want to say there's a Hot Chip remix of Kids, and Gu- Kids with Guns by Gorillaz that goes about as hard as the real song. Um <laughs> Like it's one of those 19, 2000 type soul child remix type deals where the remix is almost mm-hmm. better than the original. But that brings us to Freak Out Release, which is a collection of really nice tracks. I think some of them, you know, I th- I'd probably say my favorite Hot Chip to date record may have either been um, really long time ago, The Warning, where you had songs <laughs> like, I mean. yeah, Boy From School, The Warning, So Glad to See You, No Fit State, like tracks like that. But, mm, actually, no. Why makes, mm, actually, no. I'd say Why Makes Sense would be my favorite Hot Chip album because you have Harache Lights, Easy to Get, Why Makes Sense, like all these songs that are just classics on there. Um, The Warning's a good one, but I really did like A Bath Full of Ecstasy. I was able to play through enough of that really well and get a really good thing out of it. What I feel unfortunately happens sometimes with Freak Out and Release, I'd say far too often than I like to, which is why I'm making a point about it in this review, is that they get into this sort of stale repetition where they're almost like, it's- okay, we're hot chip, we're doing the thing, we're making the song. And we're like, oh boy, we've been making techno synth alternative rock songs for the past 20 years, and we are not sure how to reinvent the wheel yet. And so you get a lot of songs that... It's weird. It doesn't even necessarily sound like old hot chip songs. They're still making new songs. There, there's some bands like the Dandy Warhols where I feel like they they discovered the, one riff and they've been making that riff it. for the past twenty years. It's a damn good yeah. riff, but like you're not moving that. These feel like new hot chip songs, but they feel like hot chip songs that could have been released five, ten years ago. It, it doesn't feel like it's acknowledging a lot of yeah. newer music, so to speak. That's what I saw. No, I, I think that actually nails it on the head because I was wondering what I f- was trying to think of the sound of this record because it definitely sounds new for in a hot chip sense, but in a way where it sounds dated, I think is a good way to explain it. There are some really good tracks in there. I absolutely love the title track, Freak Out Release. Really, really like it. I think it's a cool, fun, different track. Like... It reminds me of some like early LCD sound system and the way that's made. Um, and with that, I like that. Um, you have like down towards the like latter half of the record, you have Miss the Bliss. I love it. Or almost sounds like experimental Depeche mode in a way. You have time right before that, which is really dancey and fun. But the issue you get with this record is, you know, you have three tracks, Broken, Not Alone, Hard to Be Funky with uh, Lou Hader. And those tracks just feel dated in a way. Like they don't, they are new hot chip tracks. They don't necessarily blonde on any other hot chip record. But for that, it's like, it just sounds like something that I could hear maybe in like 2007, 2008 come out. And at that time, think it sounds really cool. But now it just feels, fla- it falls flat. It feels dated. It doesn't feel like there's any like progress in the way of their sound for it. And that's where I was actually starting to get a little worried with this record. Um, Towards the end, just go ahead. I was gonna say I'll go a little bit of a step further. To me, like I like Hot Chip because even like when they're remixing songs, they do a lot of remixes of other artists' things. 
their remixes sound characteristically hot chip. Like they sound like DJs, even though yeah. they're like yeah. bigger works. In fact, they can make a characteristic sound that like is characteristically them. Um, Eleanor, uh, the second track on here. Eleanor. Sounds yeah. like a Roosevelt track. It, it sounds like Elliot to me, which Elliot was a good ass track that was oh, released. Oh, kind of sound early, like Elliot. Yeah, it was released in the earlier part of the decade in like 2012, yeah, like 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, hard to be funky. It has some like Alex Turner, like <laughs> lyrical, like turns into it. Like the way he like kind of does that little mm-hmm. bit when he kind of gets to the pre chorus and everything like there. It has some arctic monkeys flair to it but again arctic monkeys flair from like 2012 2013 something going like what the hell hot chip like i had no this was not a complaint i had even remotely from bath mm-hmm. full of ecstasy ecstasy or why makes sense which by the way came out in 2015 <laughs> right so like exactly. it would have been most acceptable in those cases it would have felt a little outdated in bath full of ecstasy and i didn't like every part of that record but no this feels like almost you know Tasteful, if not a little bit on the nose, sort of hot chip giving waves to their like favorite artists of the past decade. But again, hot chip, this is not a remixes record. Like this is y'all. Y'all get to make your effort musically. And this feels like, yeah, yeah, this feels like, I'm not going to go that far because that's insulting, but it feels like you're approaching a covers band, so to speak. And there are some, um, old storied bands who have essentially become covers bands um, over the past couple years that are terrible, that are so terrible that I will not even insult you or implicate you by mentioning the names of those bands that rhyme with schmeezer. okay? Like, I will not compare Hot Chip to a band like that, but I feel like Hot Chip is capable of originality, and I don't feel a lot of this. And when you do get it, it's just sort of, you know, I'll forget it. It doesn't have that longevity thing, which is what we're talking about from the beginning. Yeah, that's like, that's the issue with this whole record is, you know, they got, they got the curse of making some fantastic records the past basically 20 years or so. Um, And the issue with that is just, I feel like they're afraid to step out of the box in that way because they've been stepping out of the box for so long that they got trapped into the own box that they created. Um, and that's what you get with this record. Again, you do have some good ideas. You have some great tracks in here, but it, this album just doesn't feel like it belongs in this decade. It doesn't feel like it belongs in 2022. Like example, we just reviewed some of some pickups, even though it's alt rock, a genre, which is, you know, borderline dead in a way because of different artists, they made it feel sound fresh. They made it feel new and they've been around just as long. Um, so for Hot Chip to do this and come out with a record that just falls face flat to me, it's disappointing in a way. Um, and I'm interested, very, very interested to see where they go from here. Um, because to me, they have to really get out of their comfort zone and figure out a way to, I wouldn't say like reinvent themselves in a way, because I don't necessarily like that for artists, but to find more of themselves, to find another notch, to find another degree that they could work in, stay still stay hot chip in a way, but do something where they have other ideas and not yeah, grab ideas from 2008 and 2015, 2013, and then bring them all into one record where it just all sounds dated. Try to find something where you can get like ideas from you can even get ideas from Roosevelt's album uh, last year or something. There is fantastic. So you can get some stuff that some of the artists that you can hear the the ideas that they're, they're I won't say stealing from, but they're they're getting from. And those artists have already moved on from that sound. So with that, it's like you know you can do a lot more, and yeah, I hope to do a lot more. Just on that to <clears throat> jump off of that point, Sean, like. I've seen the more recent Roosevelt shows. In fact, Roosevelt's doing a show in LA soon, but it's gonna be a DJ set. And yeah, DJ, he, he does hello DJ. But here's the, here's the deal though. Like, I've now seen Roosevelt do <clears throat> DJ sets like as part of his regular shows. That's what I saw him do back in Manchester. He did it with a live band, but like for the encore, and then he would stretch out the conclusions of certain songs and make them DJ tracks. And they were very funky. They were very housey. Like, dude, when I tell you, like, I have shitty recordings that will not do it justice, but I'll have to send them to you anyways. Like, it is great. But, like, 
now I have to go back and go, wait, this is what Hot Chip did in the 2000s. So now we look at this kind of race where like, is Roosevelt going to be Hot Chip before Hot Chip becomes Roosevelt? <laughs> it seems like, yes. I mean, I hate to make those dichotomies here because that's not necessarily the competition, but like, what we're trying to say is that like, Hot Chip sounds like they're chasing newer artists that they kind of like, almost as if they're about to remix their songs rather than doing what Hot Chip is good at as a band individually with what they do, which is what they are good mm. at. I think other artists who are like just coming up inspired by bands like Hot Chip are going to get better at remixing and DJing faster than Hot Chip gets good at um, mimicking artists that they like the sounds of. So basically what I'm saying is Hot Chip, stick to what you're good at doing because you're one of the few bands with like 20 years of staying power who could if you really wanted to still be doing it. But like this, I'll be honest, this album does not bring me as much confidence as I want it to be. It's not a flop. It's not disastrous. It's not terrible, but Hot Chip can definitely do better. And I don't know if many, if any of these songs will stay with me as well as previous Hot Chip records have in the past. And that's a shame because you hate to see it. We talked about in the uh, spoiler in the Muse episode, you hate to see an artist be good and then stop being good and then continue to stop being good for a long time. It makes you wonder, will it's they hard. ever turn around? And, um, check out the Muse bonus episode um, that we'll be posting for members and publicly very soon for the answer on whether or not Muse was ever able to turn around and when that point of um, turning bad was, because that's arguable too. But I, I hope it turns out better for Hot Chip. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. Arbitrary scale. You know what show you're watching. This week it's, <laughs> this week it's, it's explosives. And uh, <laughs> Sean, what are you going to give this? Um, oh, Jesus. I'm gonna give this one. Of, oh, go ahead. Uh, 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 no, I was gonna say everything I'm saying is really uh, everything I'm thinking is really bad. But we're gonna go with this. We're gonna go with one stick of dynamite. That's it. Simple. All reliable. I was gonna go with um one of those unexploded bombs that's in like the countryside in France. Oh, shit. <laughs> one of those things you just your grandson digs up and you're like ah oh, shit here we go again <laughs> one of those what, things that just evacuates an entire city yeah one of my favorite quotes from the uh, Steve Carell 2008 remake of Get Smart I'll have mm. you hunting for landmines with a hammer <laughs> <laughs> I, love the, I really like that, the remake of Get Smart super underrated movie and I also think that super underrated. uh the 2020s especially is a time where we need some absurd spy comedies. Just like the culture needs some absurd spy comedies to keep us away from um, superhero films and whatever dumb, weird, horny shit A24 is working on currently. <laughs> and like, um, we, we, we need something to bring us a return to form back to cinema. Uh, James, James Bond with more laughs. Uh, just don't make Austin Powers again because someone has to give Mike Myers a break. Yeah, please don't. 